Welcome to this week's 10 minute topic Swarf and Chip show on the hottest day of the year. Where are we Geo? Lynn's we're at Superstar Components near Lincoln and we're going to investigate how this company is competing with Asia. Yeah, let's find out some of Neil Wilkinson's secrets. A huge congratulations on a very successful machine shop, Neil. Uh, before I kind of extract lots of information from you and some, get some of your secrets, um, tell me about Superstar Components. Uh, Superstar Components is a direct selling mountain bike brand on the internet. We uh, originally got all our parts from Asia, but I got so frustrated with the uh, lead times from Asia majority along with quality that I decided to start manufacturing in-house to the point where we manufacture pretty much everything in-house now. And how long have you been going? Uh, Superstar itself has been going for about 15 years and then the machine shop we've been going for over 10 years. But you've made significant growth in such a short space of time in terms of the amount of machines here. I know my yeah. boss said I was here a few years ago and there was only one machine and look how many you've got now. So what is it that you concentrate on doing differently? We try and make complete products so we can sell a, a finished product. We try subbing certain parts out but in the end quite often we end up just buying the machine and doing it ourselves so we can do everything in house. And what's the heart and behind your purchase? What is it your, your, the kind of the key is to when you're looking to buy a new machine? It needs to be able to do the job we need. It's just a, a simple, if we need a turn part, we need a lathe. But then we look at the bigger picture for how many other things we can make with it so we can extend our product range. So what is it exactly that you require? We have to focus on all the details such as human intervention time to be competitive with Asia because every detail matters on the cost for our customers because we've got a very high bar to compete. So we focus on automation, we focus on tooling, we focus on the machines so we can make a lot of parts every day without having to spend all day in front of the machine. So one of my favourite parts of the show is giving you a tour of somebody's machine shop. So, of course, well, you cannot miss it, the Matsura MAM 72. Now, this is a machine, it's a five-axis machine, high mix, complex work. A big machine in the far corner, then we go to a small footprint of a machine, which is the Brother Speedio. This is a very fast machine, and this is an example of one of the parts he's making. Now, that particular finish is because they want a quite unique surface finish for putting bonding and adhesives on there too. As you go down this corridor here, we're talking about a mini mill. Now this has a multi-part pneumatic vise on there. He doesn't really care too much for the cycle time, even though it's a very, very fast uh, uh, machine. It's more his priority is to keep parts on there and keeping that spindle turning. Um, over here, you've got a star slider. This is gonna make the long shaft work, you know, high volume, low volume, and in the far corner, is that Doosan over there. Now that's the Lynx, that's a bar fed machine with a sub spindle. What he's all about is making parts in one. It's a bit of a quick tour. So uh, loads of parts everywhere, loads of swarf bins everywhere as well. We've got another lathe as well from Doosan. That's the Doosan Lynx bar fed machine with the sub spindle uh, making parts in one. And oh, Ian, you've done it already. He's also offered us some non-alcoholic beer, which is just a dream. Not right now. <laughs> okay, anyway, over here, again, we've got two sliding head machines, different sizes. Um, again, it's all about automation and the Abilink that he loves. The far corner, we've got the Fanuc. That machine, that Fanuc is over there, is making pedals all day long, 400 in a day. It's incredible, but this is the area. These Hass machines is what we're going to concentrate on today. James, thanks for being on the show today. Now, automation plays a massive part here at Superstar Components. What are Haas um, offering to Superstar Components? Well, Haas have always been able to offer automated solutions. And one of the things that Superstar came to us about 10 years ago was how they could maximize the efficiency of a table to get as many parts off as possible not in the shortest possible space of time, but actually more efficiently. So what we see here, for example, they've got a job running where they've got multiple parts and the cycle time is actually quite long. And that helps them with their automation process because they can move away from this machine and get on with other operations around the shop. 
but also what we have on this particular model, the VF4SS, is our auto pallet changing system as well. And that has run for almost 4,000 hours since they've had this machine constantly. So we're able to offer automation on this machine by keeping that spindle running constantly by the use of a pallet changing system as well. We've been here most of the day. This machine has not stopped. It's presenting approximately 40 components to the spindle at one given time, fully utilizing the machine bed. How long has this solution been available from Haas? Uh, the palletization solution has been available for uh, oh, almost decades now so we've been able to offer that for a long long time so uh, what we find in the marketplace is that we've got uh, a lot of machines out there and a lot of people that are happy to use the machining capability uh, what they're unaware of potentially is that we do now have many automation solutions to help them with the loading process as well this is where I want to get into your head, Neil. How are you viewing a machine shop differently than others, shall we say, in the industry? A lot of the parts we make, we're making quite high volumes, so we can focus on doing them really efficiently. So a good example is the Haas ST10 lathe, where we, instead of manual loading, where it would take an hour to make maybe 20 parts or 10 parts, we can do four, five, maybe 10 times more parts without any human intervention time. So I'm programming the next job while this machine is running the parts for me and then I'll move to the next part so I can handle five or six machines at the same time and let the machines do the machining. So it's kind of like a scheduling so yeah. you're not so much okay you're bothered by the machines of course you trust that they're capable of doing the job that they're doing but it's everything else that you're considering and what is that on a day-to-day -day basis like? It's down to the simple things like swarf control, are the conveyors any good? Are your tools reliable? All the little details you have to get right so you know when you come back it's finished all 40 parts right. It doesn't matter that it takes a few seconds longer, as long as it always works, it's always reliable, your parts are on size. The focus is on efficiency, on never having problems, never making scrap, rather than making it as physically fast as possible. For Neil to view a machine shop in such a way at such a young age is a, is a real testament to him. Oh, he had a real vision right from the start. It was clear that he was going to look at things very differently. This is the latest introduction to automation that he's done. And he's, he's actually moved to the pinch point. I've, I've broken the light curtain, which is why this machine's not working by picking this up earlier. But um, this, this was a pinch point, this component, and it's now moved it to a completely different part of the factory via this process of automation. And we talked earlier about automation from a pallet point of view. This is a fully integrated auto parts loader on a standard lathe and with a footprint that's no worse than, than a bar feeder. And it's really taken automation to the next level. It's Haas, uh, it runs through the control, so it really has changed the way that their business works. But the real thing that Neil looked at this about, he wanted to automate, he wanted to move that component forward but automation normally means an investment of three, four hundred thousand pounds to do something like that. This was nothing in the realms of that. So we can we can put a similar setup to this. This is actually a Y-axis lathe, so a little bit more cost involved there. But this kind of setup on a basic two-axis lathe can be under a hundred thousand pounds, which is reachable for normal subcontract business who know what they're going to be doing over the next few months. Wow, I mean that price is, is astounding really. What kind of flexibility do you get with this automation solution in regards to different sized parts, the weight of the parts, etc. On the, on, on the pallet? That's a really good question. Actually it's quite agile. So we can go down to parts as, as small as 21 millimeters and right up to 127 millimeters, four and a half kilos worth of weight. But in terms of, of what you do, then it's all programmed through the control, it's really simple. And you mentioned the control, that it's fully in integrated with the automation solution. How important is this for a potential end user that's looking to embrace automation? It just makes things really simple. Neil, what are the benefits of winning parts back from Asia? We're all manufacturing with the same metal and the same machines, so there's no reason why we can't compete with Asia. We've just got to have the right mentality. And the benefits for myself and for my customers is we can be much more reactive so rather than six month lead times or in the bike industry it's 800 days on some parts it's crazy oh, wow, times really we can turn around parts in a week so then we can react to customer demands and fulfill customers orders as quickly as possible without having to invest millions of pounds within stock 
But you're not just doing parts for the bike in cycling industry. You've now expanded to subcontract machine work. Why is that? I've chosen specific customers and specific work, which we work with as a partner, because we have the right mix of machines to make their parts really efficiently. Are you picky about those parts? Yes, yes, in some ways. I'll, I'll happily tell a customer if we aren't the right machine shop to make it. If our machine works with their parts, we'll always win the work. So what work is it that you are ultimately after then? It's the, the mid to high volumes. So we're not a job shop. We can't do single one-offs, ten-offs or prototyping work. We just physically don't have the time. But where people want to buy spindle hours and they want to make big volumes on a reliable basis, that's, that's our bread and butter on long-term projects. It doesn't need to be massive numbers. It just needs to be uh, for, to get 24 hours run for example so then we can drop the price as low as possible and make it really efficient for them. So any advice for someone who wants to run their machine shop more efficiently? You should work... While watching MTD. Ah. <laughs> you should work smarter not harder. Um, every year we want to make more and more and more and it's not physically possible to work longer and longer hours so if you let the machine do the work for you you're a smart person and that way you can run multiple machines and be much more efficient and then it helps your customer because you can make parts at a more competitive price yeah. so everyone's a winner do you enjoy it yeah i like programming i don't enjoy loading metal so i let the machine do that for me <laughs> brilliant uh, i've never been to a machine shop like yours it really is fantastic and to see automation work holding and all of the kind of wonderful ways that you machine and you've shown me some fantastic components this place is is something really special thank you for the offer of the non-alcoholic beer and we also <laughs> got ice cream earlier which is brilliant thank you also for watching this week's swarf and chips do not forget to like comment and subscribe and as we always say keep those spindles turning thanks neil